You're going to jail, Martha. You're gonna be raped. Welcome to Business Plays, I am your host Simon and today Danny has written this article for us which we're going to go through together. This was a suggestion from one of you guys. What is insider trading and why is it illegal? I'm also interested, all I know about it pretty much is that Martha Stewart went to prison for it. Although I think she actually didn't go to prison for it. She went to prison for like obstructing justice or something and she could have got away with like no prison if she just hadn't lied about the insider trading. It doesn't matter. We're probably going to get into this. I've also lately been watching the TV show Billions, so maybe this will help in my understanding and your understanding of that fantastic show. Let's crack on. Media headlines over the last few decades have lapped up high profile cases of wealthy business directors or greedy stock traders stepping over the line with insider dealing and they've often faced humiliating consequences. But what exactly is insider trading? Why is it illegal? And do the same laws apply all over the world? I've also heard that in Russia it's not illegal. I'm not sure if that's true. I imagine we'll get into it. The first thing to point out that insider trading isn't technically illegal at all. So we have nothing to worry about. Best let them just get on with it. They all know what they're doing. The end. Definitely not the end. Well, okay, but we should maybe probe the topic a little more deeply than that. It's easy to imagine insider traders as a group of shady people sneaking around the New York Stock Exchange in sunglasses and fake beards making suspicious transactions under the veil of a criminal shadow. It's not really how I imagine them. I just imagine them like Martha Stewart, like people who just get caught up in something. Or uh, now like Bobby Axelrod from Billions. But insider trading isn't just insiders buying or selling stock in their own company. The definition of insider Insider can vary slightly from country to country, but it ultimately boils down to the same thing. A fairly big cheese within the company. A director, CEO, high-level executive, or even somebody who just owns more than 10% of the firm's equity. Oh wow, so if you've got like 10% of a public company just because you're rich and you really put a lot of money into it but have nothing else to do with the company, you can still be an insider trader, even if you don't have inside information. Whatever their rank or status, the thing that binds all of these insiders together is that they have access access to potentially valuable information about the company which has not been made available to the public. But despite a widespread misconception that all insider trading is criminal activity, most insider trading is perfectly legal and it goes on all the time without anybody getting thrown in jail. You'll often hear of CEOs selling or buying back shares in their own company or employees dealing in shares in the company where they work and all of that is perfectly fine. The US are a little stricter than the rest of the world in that every single insider transaction has to be filed with the US Securities and Exchange Commission. So that they can keep close tabs on what they're up to. But aside from that, every insider is perfectly entitled to make legal trades in their own business. And I, I didn't realize that was the case. I thought that if you work for a company, you couldn't have shares in it or something like that because you know you have unfair information. But and but that's the point. If you don't have unfair information that the other people don't have, you seem to be fine. So you can trade in your own business. However, all of this is obviously not legal advice or anything like this. It's entertainment, guys. <laughs> However, there is, of course, a darker side to insider trading. And in a burst of fizzy creativity, I'm going to call this illegal insider trading. On the surface, illegal insider trading is remarkably similar to legal insider trading, but with one big, potentially sell door slamming difference. The trader, and this is in bold, thanks for making it clear, Danny, the trader is using non-public knowledge to their advantage. The interesting thing about insider trading is that you don't even have to be an insider to be found guilty of a criminal offense. In fact, you can be anyone at all. So let's imagine that Danny, Danny is the CEO of Danny's Novelty Trundle Wheels. For a while now, the stock market has been rife with speculation that the corporate giant Whistler's Manic Measuring Devices has been looking to make a substantial investment in Danny's business. And the share price of Danny's business has been rising because people are excited about the takeover. On Wednesday, Danny is privately informed via carrier pigeon that Whistler's Manic Measuring Devices have decided not to invest at all. Danny, I'd invest in you. But for the sake of this example, I'm not. They've gone with Benny's bubble inclinometers? 
Instead, with a heavy heart, Danny makes plans to issue a press release on Friday, knowing that the share price is almost certainly going to take a massive nosedive as a result of this press release. If Danny now decides to sell a big stack of shares in his company on Thursday, one day before the news becomes public, Danny is guilty of illegal insider trading. The reasoning being that he'd have an unfair advantage over the other investors because of the inside knowledge. And this makes sense. I see why that is the case, because it's like, then the other investors who don't have that information lose out. However, if Danny waits until after the press release, before he offloads his shares, this would be perfectly legal, as he wouldn't be perceived to have any advantage over the general public. Okay, now let's imagine that on Thursday, Danny has a lunchtime drink with his good friend Barry. Barry doesn't have any interest in the stock market or business in general, but Danny advises him to buy shares in his company, and it's been a fairly good investment so far. This has worked out well for Danny. Danny as well, because Barry then usually buys all the drinks because he's so grateful. On Thursday, Danny says to Barry that he's been having a tough week because Whistler's manic measuring devices has pulled out of that investment deal like we talked about before. Later that day, Barry goes and sells all of his shares in Danny's company based on this information. And it's gone. And even though Barry's just this ordinary dude with very limited experience in trading shares, he would potentially face a prison sentence for being an insider trader because he was purposefully acting on information that hadn't been made public. The secret information that Danny had about my Whistler's company not uh, investing in his. Naturally, the strength of the laws and the level of monitoring and enforcement varies from country to country, but not as much as you might think. The UK, and particularly the US, have always led the way with tight regulations on illegal trading, whereas other countries such as Japan and Russia are only just beginning to catch up. Okay, so Russia's making efforts. I thought it was like totally legal there. <laughs> I was like, how does business work in Russia if you could just trade on inside information? Actually, I imagine it just makes oligarchs really rich. But the crucial thing to bear in mind is that your own country's laws aren't really important. It's not about your location, it's about the location of the stock exchange that you're using to make your investments. So you may well live in Timbuktu, where local insider trading laws are likely to be very lax, but as soon as you invest on the US stock market, then you're bound by stricter US regulations and law. The biggest stock exchanges in the world are all in countries countries which have laws in place to prevent illegal trading, and regardless of your own location, those laws are the ones you need to note when making a trade. Yeah, so just be safe, don't invest, don't don't sell or buy stocks based on inside information. It's not worth it, guys. The effectiveness of those laws may be more questionable in some countries than others, though. Hong Kong, China, India waited until the 1990s to put regulations in place, and relatively few convictions have emerged so far in those countries. In contrast, the US has the most developed regulations of all, with a history stretching back to the 1930s and a long list of high-profile convictions, including Martha Stewart, famously. So, while you'll be risking a potential prison sentence by taking part in dodgy dealings on any of the world's major stock exchanges, the risks will be considerably higher if you're investing on the UK or US markets. In fact, there was a very specific reason why the US led the way by several decades in laws against insider trading, and this was the 1929 Wall Street crash. If you want to learn more about that, that could be an interesting one for this channel. Any other suggestions as well? Let me know below, and let me know if you want Wall Street Crash. I don't know much about it, it could be fun. Okay, so back to the back to the story. Mr. Albert H. Wigan was the respectable head of Chase National Bank. Just before the biggest, most devastating stock market decline in US history, Mr. Wigan shorted 40,000 shares in his own company. Without wanting to get too technical, the risky strategy of shorting or short-selling shares is that you're able to borrow shares at the current high value and then immediately sell them, expecting that you'll be able to buy them back at a lower price later. That's Sounds pretty complicated. Uh, basically, it's just a strategy you adopt if you think a company is headed for a fall. It's a way to make money. Short selling is essentially a way to make money if you think a share, the price of a share is going to go down in a company. I think it's also particularly risky because if it doesn't go down, you're on the hook for you know, potentially an infinite amount of money if the share price goes up a lot. In this case, it suddenly meant that Wigan had a vested interest in running his own successful company into the ground, which is exactly what he did. Yeah, this is why insider trading is like bad, because you can short sell 
and then be like, all I gotta do is now trash my company and I'm gonna make loads of money. When the rest of America suffered from the fallout of the Wall Street crash, Wiggin walked away with $4 million in profit from the epic financial disaster because of his shady trading. No charges would ever be brought against him because what he did was perfectly legal at the time. <laughs> I imagine it quickly was made illegal after that. It's like, wow, that was a really smart thing to do, uh, now it's fully illegal. <laughs> he wasn't entirely without scruples, though he also accepted a $100,000 a year pension for life from the bank sometime later. He generously declined this, although that may have had something to do with the fact that the American public were now calling for his head. Dealings such as this led to the development of America's first laws on insider trading in the 1930s, which became ever tighter as the decades rolled on. Fast forward to 2004, and the Martha Stewart case became possibly the most famous example of a high-profile insider trading conviction. Martha Stewart was already a household name at this point, having carved out a hugely successful career as a model, businesswoman, TV personality, and writer. Sadly, any recent biography of Martha Stewart now has to include the words convicted felon alongside those career highlights. I was reading Martha Stewart's Wikipedia page before I got started with this, and it is like, you know, model, businesswoman, convicted felon. <laughs> It's like, what did she do? Like, murder? Rape? No, just insider trading. <laughs> Felon sounds way more serious, but I think that just means you committed a federal crime, right? Which is one, like, at a national level rather than a state level. Americans, if I'm wrong on that, hit me up in the comments below. Martha Stewart held close to 4,000 shares in a biopharmaceutical company called Imclone Systems, who had developed a drug for cancer treatments called Herbitux. Imclone Systems had been waiting for a decision from the Food and Drug Administration to approve their drug. When the company was finally notified that the drug had been rejected, the company CEO Samuel Waxel decided to advise many of his close friends to quickly sell their shares in Imclone before the information went public and the share price took a tumble. Oh man, this is definitely illegal, right? I think this has got to be illegal. This guy's going to jail or something. But it's got to be hard. You're like, oh god. All my friends have invested in my company and they're all going to lose so much money. And you can't tell them? Woo! Tough decisions. Not so tough decisions because, you know, like losing some friends, going to prison. One of these friends was Peter Bankovitz, who just happened to be Martha Stewart's broker. Bankovitz passed on this non-public information to Martha, who then decided to sell her 4,000 shares before this news was officially released. And I guess she must have known that it was inside information, because surely her, if her broker could say, like, I'm going to sell these shares, and she'd be like, Okay. But I guess she knew that it was based on inside information. When the news on the FDA's rejection of the drug finally became public, the Imclone share value plummeted by 16%, and it was estimated that at the time Martha avoided a loss of around $45,000. Good for Martha. Although... No, not so good for Martha or anyone else involved in the scandal. Imclone CEO Samuel Waxel was fined $4 million. That's not so bad. I mean, I'm sure he's super rich, and then at least he doesn't get to go to jail. Uh, oh. <laughs> Uh, oh man, and sentenced to over seven years in prison for his part in the conspiracy. The broker Peter Bankovitz was eventually sentenced to five months in prison for lying to investigators about suspicious stock sales. Meanwhile, Martha Stewart, who arguably was just acting on advice of a broker, yeah, that's what I kind of feel. It's like, if I didn't have a broker, because I just invest in index funds, because I don't think brokers really do anything. If I had a broker and he phoned me up and was like, yo, Simon, you gotta sell your shares in this thing, I'd be like, okay, Jeff, you know what you're doing. <laughs> you're my broker. You're the man who's supposed to do all this for me. Why are you asking me? And then it'd probably be like, because I need your permission to break the law. And then I'd be like, don't do that, Jeff. Jesus. She served five months in prison not for insider trading, but for criminal obstruction and providing false information. So essentially, she was like, she was like lying to the FBI. That was a mistake. In other words, she might have got away with a smaller penalty if she'd just been a bit more honest about the whole thing. Things went from bad to worse for Martha in prison. Despite building a business empire on homemaking and decoration, she had to endure the humiliation of losing the prison's annual decorating contest. Um... <laughs> Martha Stewart definitely didn't go to Supermax. Have you guys seen The Wolf of Wall Street where he gets punished and he goes to like Club Fed where he's just like playing tennis? <laughs> it's different if you're a white collar criminal, it seems. And I'm like, Martha Stewart, I'm totally fine with that. Like, this is a non violent crime. Not really, people don't really get hurt that bad. It's not great for financial business and stuff, but I wouldn't want Martha Stewart going to like ADX Florence or Alcatraz or something like that. <laughs> it's like, what did you do? Uh, my broker told me to buy this shares. You're going to jail, Martha. You're gonna be raped. 
But the real sting in the tail, if she'd actually just been a little more patient and waited for Imclaim's share price to rise again, she would have actually made an overall profit of $30,000 instead of serving five months in prison alongside a $30,000 fine. It turns out crime not only doesn't pay, it sometimes costs a bloody fortune. This is what I'm talking about. Like, I, you assume Martha Stewart's broker's gotta be good, right? Martha, she's Martha Stewart. She's worth hundreds of millions of dollars. She's got a good broker. And he still, like, you can't beat the market. They, they don't beat the market. Business Blaze, Insider Trading. Smash the like button, subscribe to this channel, and I'll see you next time.